Well, Mars has always been, for a long time, a planet that has attracted interest. If you recall, some of the early astronomers thinking they saw canals uh, on, the, on the planet Mars. And, uh, and more recent dis uh, discoveries have been with probes that have not landed but gone really close by it. And seeing places of, of terrain where possibly there might be some kind of stratigraphy which would indicate, possibly indicate the uh, presence of water at one time. It's this whole subject of human beings' interest in, interest in voyaging beyond the Earth has been part of science fiction, and I think increasingly it may be uh, of, of importance uh, strategically. Unfortunately, when it comes to polit world politics, that's an issue, as the moon may become. But also, human beings seem to have an, 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 a, a born desire to explore. Mm -hmm. And it's not as if we have, haven't finished exploring the ocean. That's still another frontier. Mm -hmm. But space becomes even, even bigger. It was after the successful appearance of David Blight that I got together uh, with Glory Aiken, who was then the president of Chesapeake Forum, and she has now moved out of town. Mm -hmm. But before she did, I remember talking to her uh, in her apartment, her house, here in Easton, about what would be an interesting topic for 2022. And I, out of the thin air, sort of, but maybe it was on my mind, I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to get someone who is deeply involved with the Mars mission. So one of our board members was watching a local CBS station in Baltimore. And it, uh, it was very short, very brief. And it was uh, a, about a woman scientist who is uh, working on the Mars rover, who lives in Glen Burnie, and who is a, uh, not only a scientist, but also an Episcopalian priest. And I thought, my goodness, right in our own backyard is this uh, really interesting person. Yeah. She, she works at, at night, she's working on, uh, on, on the Perseverance rover and sending commands to that. And during the daytime, she is a, an Episcopal priest at St. Albans Church in, in Glen Burnie. And uh, I thought, that's just fascinating. So I began to look at every single video that I think is extant about Pamela Conrad, because her special, special interest was looking at what kind of uh, habitats are there on Earth, and can we find habitats where, we can, where life might be? For all of her depth of scientific knowledge, she is extremely accessible uh, and in live video performances. And it was, it was the teacher in her that really uh, compelled me to want to go a little bit further and to see more and more of, of what she has done. She also had a, a deep interest in religious things, um, perhaps because of what's behind the planet, who's the maker of all of this, what is, our, what is the human being's role on Earth, Are, is there life elsewhere? So while she was still working at uh, uh, NASA Goddard, uh, she decided to uh, get a, uh, a degree in theology, and so she uh, is a... Uh, she is a, a minister, um, and also it has now become her ministerial duties are her prime duties, but she is still working uh, a lot on this whole Mars uh, mission. Uh, and the, the course, or the lecture that she's going to give, or conversation as she put it, is uh, also geared not just for adults or senior adults, but also for students, I think, in high school, certainly junior and seniors in high school. She's, she, she is able to speak to almost anybody on these topics. So uh, I think that's going to be a very important part of, our, of her presentation. She yeah. even uh, talks about the, uh, uh, the, the whole mystery of the universe yeah. and, and, and finds spiritual things in it that I think we all do at one point. But I think she's, just as, we, as I mentioned before, this, uh, the... Uh, uh, the philosophical and the scientific are sort of separate, mm -hmm. but she's trying to bring these together in a way that I think is, uh, uh, she is not doctrinaire. She says what this force is could be something we don't quite understand. Call it God if you wish. Uh, but and I think all of us in our lives at some point have those moments of time when we feel that we're, we're in the presence of something that's not just easily calculated or put in a formula. 
uh, some kind of a spiritual of the world, a, a, a spiritus mundus, if you wish, 